by race because um, during the Katrina project, that was the, the, the big elephant in the room that nobody really, really talked about. I mean, there was so much other stuff going on and so much hurt and so much pain and so much, you know, um, sadness that, you know, the race only compounded it, you know, and we couldn't really, really talk about it like we wanted to. So we decided that the piece that we would do would have to be centered around race and centered around um, making sure that we can have the dialogue between ourselves that we couldn't have during that Katrina project. Um, so it's been very interesting right now. Um, we're at the point of we got a 30-minute 30, 30 snippet of it of the show. The show doesn't really open until um, November, but we're going to show a work in progress in L.A. next week um, and do do some workshops. And right now we're... we're it's, it's built on the theme of the Great American Race, and it's a um, it's a game show format to the to the um, to the show. So it's very it's very interesting. I think it's very interesting. That's great. I had no idea that the sort of birthplace for this piece was back at in the Uprooted Project. So as you know, the reason why uh, we chose to, to speak to you this month for the newsletter is because it's Jazz Awareness Month, and um, uh. it's also Earth Month, or the Earth Day happens during this month. But uh, we wanted to uh, sort of highlight you and your work because of uh, your being a jazz pr practitioner. And so I'm wondering, because with that lens on, uh, what do you think are the similarities and the differences between jazz and community-based art making. One thing about jazz, um, a lot of times it goes into the individual, mm -hmm. so that's where it's different a little bit. Um, it's, it's, it, even though you're working with people, um, it's, it's really about your prowess on your instrument and being able to um, to play and be able to, to um, adapt to whatever's being played around you. So it's still working, in the, and, and the similarity is that you're working in the community of musicians. And anything can happen at any time, you know, but you just have to be prepared to be able to, to deal with whatever goes on and make it the best that you can um, from whatever members or whatever elements you have. And it's the same as the community. I mean, when you have a community, you don't go in the community and say, well, if we don't have this, we can't do it. When you go in the community, you have to say, okay, what do we have and what can we do with what we have? And I think that's the, the similarities and the differences. Um, what the similarities being that, that when you're together with a group of people playing jazz, you have to work together. You have to make it sound good together. Mm. Nobody is supposed to really stand out from, from the other. But the, the difference is when it comes to the individual um, improvisation, and I really can't say it's a difference right there because, I mean, you come in and in jazz and great jazz, and the, the, the soloist is doing whatever he's doing, the rest of the band is following them the whole time, so it, it, it's it's still a community. It's still community-based music, you know. So I don't think that. I think it's much more similarities than it is differences. Right. In that comparison. What, what do you think jazz has to teach us today? Well, some of those same tenets I just talked about, mm -hmm. as far as um, I think. Well, you know what? The best thing that I can answer with that question is to listen. Mm-hmm. To listen. I mean, in order to play play jazz, you have to listen to what's going on around you and then adapt to it. So, I mean, I think in, in our time, a lot of times we get so focused on, on presenting or, or, or giving or trying to be, you know, um, the the actual person being listened to as opposed to listening to what's all around us all the time. There's so many things that's going on that we, we're not listening to. And I think jazz... It's something that you have to listen to in order to, to really, really, really get it. I mean, uh, with other musics, um, other genres, there are some things that, that, that are in there that just you can just like in, in, in um, let's say, Appalachian music. The banjo, mm -hmm. you don't really have to listen to the banjo. You can feel that banjo, right? And sometimes you can just start slapping your hands, you know, mm -hmm. by hearing it. <laughs> you know, just hearing it. I mean, just, just really feeling it, right? Mm. In jazz, you have to listen to each one of those instruments to see what's coming next mm. and see where the ideas go. And the musicians in jazz have to listen to each other, I, I think, maybe more than probably any other music, I mean, um, any other genre. Mm. Because everything else is so structured that it's almost that you can just do what you do patternistically and, you know, you keep on going in other genres. But in jazz, I mean, anything can happen at any time. So it's like you have to listen. You have to be attuned to your environment 
musically. And I think that's what we really, really have to get to in, in our, our social consciousness and our environmental consciousness um, is to really, really start listening again and become more attuned. So um, before I let you go, I have two questions about you as a person. What's your favorite quote? Oh, man, um, I got so many quotes. <laughs> um, so my favorite quote will have to be, uh, that's a good one. Oh, um, power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm. All right. And uh, name one person who has made a major impact on you or influenced your life as an art maker. Um, I think the most major impact on my life is probably by my father. Mm. Um, and I always say that. I tell people all the time. My dad encouraged me to always think. So I think um, well, it, it, it indirectly or directly goes back to the art making. Because I try to be very, very conscious um, about what I put out there as being a reflection of me. I try to be very conscious that, that when people see it or when people hear it or when people um, um, listen to it or however they get it, get, get the message, right, that what they hear is something that reflects on the greater whole of humanity. So I always think about that when I, when I try to uh, make pieces. I always try to challenge people to think through the music that I make. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess it would be my father. And his, his thing he used to tell us all the time is use your head for more than a hat rack. Bring homework to him, man. I'd be like, listen, Dad, uh, can you show me how to do this? He'd be like, um, go think about it. <laughs> I'd go back and I'd come back and he'd be like, um, go back and think about it. And then finally when I, when I would come back and be like, I think this is the way that, that you do it, Dad. And he'd look at it and he'd be like, no, was that that hard? And he would always be like, you go think about it. Go think about it. And I think because of that, you know, I've been blessed to be a thinker as opposed to just somebody who just does stuff just because somebody tells them to do it, you know? Mm. So I've been blessed. That, that's, I think that's one of the major impacts. I, I got plenty of others, you know. My mother's generosity, always given. She's always been the kind of person I kind of got that from her. Um, and my grandfather's toughness. He was a tough man, you know what I'm saying? And my grandmother's humor. I mean, my grandmother was a very funny woman. Hmm. Um, but funny in a very charming way. You know, she was a very charming person. So all those things. But I think the most thing was about thinking and being very, very um, thoughtful in your, in, your, in your selection of words, in your selection of your actions, um, all the way across the bar, board just to be th thoughtful. And be thoughtful um, not only of your impact, but the impact you have on others. But be thoughtful of how other people um, do whatever they do. So, you know, um, I've always been an observer of people. So when people come in my sphere, I know how to deal with them or how to, you know, how to handle them. So, um, but it all, I think, attributed to, to my father telling me all the time to think, think for myself. Well, that is really wonderful. I want to thank you for your time today and... Uh, Thank our listeners for tuning in to our first ever yes. Roots podcast. And hey, one more, I'm working on two albums right now. One oh, is a jazz wow. album, and the jazz album is called Watching Over Me, and I'll send you some tracks from it so you can check it out. Um, oh, great. And I have um, the other other album is an R&B album, mm -hmm. um, and I'm working on both of them right now at the same time. I'll hopefully be through with them by, by the fall um, or by the summer end. And the, the other one is called Love End of the World as We Know It. Wow. So um, I've seen some tracks of, of, from both of them. That sounds great. But thanks, Roots listeners, and have a great day.